Dear Lord, we thank you for the possibility of happiness. We thank you, Lord, for the happiness that you allow us and enable us to enjoy. We thank you, Lord, for your power that we can use so we can surmount the sadness, tragedies, the loneliness of life. Lord, we pray that you may give us a message coming from your heart, a message that will lift us out of loneliness. And if we already are happy, a message that will make us even happier, that will enable us to make more people around us happy. Lord, take over this activity. We ask you, Lord, to be our presider, to be our speaker, to be our everything. Look into our hearts, Father. Kung meron po kaming mga kasalanan na natitira pa dito, mga unconfessed sins, mga alalahanin, worries, fears, and doubts, in the name of Jesus, we surrender this, Father, and we ask you, replace it with your peace, with your joy, with your enlightenment. We enthrone you, Father, God of Moses, God of Abraham. Be our speaker, please. Use your servant as your instrument. Accomplish your mighty and holy purpose in our lives. And may your will be done. We reject, rebuke, and drive away all presence and all work of evil within us and in our midst. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you may descend upon us. Enable us to see the face of God. Enable us to hear, to understand, and to be more like Jesus. Father, we praise and thank you. Committing this activity to you in Jesus' mighty name. Be happy, not sad. Pwede nyo ba sabihin sa katabi nyo yan with feelings? Be happy, not sad. Sabi po sa Colossians 3 verse 2, Set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. So doon pa lang, sasaya na tayo. If we set our minds on things above, not on earthly things. Why? Earthly things perish. Yung mga nagpapasaya sa atin ng mga earthly things, yan ay napapanis, nasisira, naluluma, nagdadepreciate, nananakaw. Kaya kung nakaset daw yung minds natin on things above, where the Lord is, and where there's permanence, and where nobody can rob you of what the Lord allows you to enjoy, then immediately, your whole attitude will change. Our whole perspective and point of view will change. How to be happy is a quest that many people are fighting for, working for, all their lives. Kaya nga po si Solomon, in all his wisdom, and the Bible tells us that no one walked the face of the earth wiser than Solomon was. Siya talaga yung pinakawise sa lahat. At sinabi niya, maraming bagay walang kwenta, they are vanities, meaningless. Sabi nga nun, kaya kailangan naiintindihan po natin how to be happy. Ang buhay lang daw ay sasandali, pahiram lang, kaya kailangan maximize happiness. How to be happy. I'd like to share five points from Scripture with you today. First of all, you want to be happy, think about the good. Philippians 4.8 Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Ano mga pinag-iisip-isip po natin? Remember, our thoughts can make us happy or sad. Kung nag-iisip tayo ng mga less than noble things, mga things that are really wrong, impure, ugly, eh di lulungkot nga tayo. Kaya sabi, isipin nyo ito bang ganitong bagay. Itong i-consider ninyo sa buhay, itong gawin yung pamantayan, itong gawin yung goal. Think about the good. Because our thoughts will always shape our behavior. Our thoughts will shape even our facial expressions. Everything begins with a thought. Sabi nga nila, so a thought reap an act. So an act reap a habit. So a habit reap a character. It all begins with a thought. If you decide to think about good things, if you decide to focus on such things, then such things come to you. Marami pong mga mahirap ipaliwanag na pwersa dito sa universe. Pero kung mag-o-observe po tayo, titignan natin yung mga tao, yung mga palaisip ng pangit, palaisip ng hindi maganda, tingnan ninyo kung masaya. Usually, miserable. So we should learn from the experiences of people around us. You should observe. So we will be spared the sorrow that many people have to go through because of their mistakes. So when you observe people and when you see how they live, how they die, then we're spared 
a lot of agony that many people have to go through. Do not be unaware of the ugliness in the world. Hindi naman yung parang polyanish yung mundo na everything is good and nice. Hindi naman talaga yung totoo. We must be aware also that there is such ugliness in the world. But do not dwell on gloom and doom. Marami naman talaga hong mabaho sa mundo. Pero ba't nyo naman hahanapin lahat? Maraming hindi maganda. Pero bakit nyo naman yun ang inyong tititigan? With due respect, siyempre, pipili na rin lang kayo ng profesyon at kung meron naman kayo ibang choice, siguro hindi nyo naman gustong magtrabaho doon sa mga naglilinis sa mga septic tank. No? Dahil yun ang kasama nyo araw-araw. Empleyado halimbawa kayo ni Malabanan. Ganyan. Although, with due respects to them, dahil profesyon din naman na malinis at uh, marangal, pero kung ayaw nyo ng ganong sitwasyon, hahanap kayo na ibang magagawa. Halimbawa, nasa salon kayo, lagi nyo naaamoy yung mabango. Diba? Depende kung anong pinipili nyo sa buhay. Think about the good things and hopeful thoughts. You know why? When you think about the good, you have hope. And when you have hope, you have strength. Yung mga tao lang pong walang pag-asa at walang inaasahan ang nangihina. Pero habang may pag-asa at may inaasahan, meron tayong lakas. And hope brings happiness. So what's our rule number one to be happy? Ano? Think about the good. Pangalawa po, look for the good. Very related to what we have been discussing. Look for the good. Hebrews 12.2 Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. Of course, the context here is if you are in a Christian community, if you fix your eyes on people, mawalang kang gana. May mga mangilangilan na nakakagana, pero hindi naman 100% of the time nakakagana rin sila. If you look deep enough, you will realize that your heroes are just like you and me. So nawawala ka ng gana, nadidisillusion ka. The context is fixing our eyes on people, on what they do, on certain aspects of themselves, especially their weaknesses, mawalang ka ng gana sa buhay. Kaya ang sabi po, fix your eyes on Jesus. Do not look only for the bad. Do not focus only on the faults and failures in others. But look for the best in others and the positive aspect of all circumstances. Pag sinabi pong keep your eyes on Jesus, it could mean really focus on Jesus or look for Jesus in people, and fix your eyes on that Jesus in people. Pag may tinignan po tayong tao, sino bang nakikita natin? Kumisa, nakikita niyo si Taning. May parang kitang-kita ko si Taning sa tao ito. It can happen. Sa atin din yun, pwedeng makita ng iba. Pero pag yun lagi ang hinanap natin, let's say there are ten people, ano ba ang masama dito? Anong mali niya? Anong masama? Anong mali niya? Anong error niya? Eh di naging kamiserable. Because you know, one of the easiest things to do in life, and I guarantee that you will be successful when you do this, is to look for faults. Because when you look for faults in other people, you will always succeed. And sometimes your success is so resounding and so glorious that it destroys you. Kaya ang sabi, fix your eyes on Jesus. O ito yung asawa ko, ito yung anak ko, ito yung nanay ko, ito yung kapatid ko, ito yung employer ko, ito yung empleyado ko. I will look for Jesus in this person and I'll fix my eyes on that aspect. Kaya pwede bang masabing, hmm, mali-mali siya sa ganito, mali-mali sa ganito. Pero, meron naman siyang karakter. Nakitang-kita ko yung love ni Christ o yung righteousness ni Christ o yung orderliness niya o yung kanyang goodness, whatever. It is true that you will always find something wrong in a person but it is also true that inside everybody there is also some good. Kaya yung umiibig, alam nyo, ang pag-ibig, laging selective yan eh. Also, hatred, pareho lang. Yung umiibig, sabi nila, love is blind. Yes, you are blind to the faults of the one you love because you choose to be blind. Pagka mahal mo ang iyong anak, nakabasag, anak, nasaktan ka ba? Pag maid ang nakabasag, mahal yan! Eh kasi baka hindi mo mahal ang maid. No? Eh mahal mo yung anak mo. So, nakakahanap ka ng dahilan. Siguro nahilo, siguro whatever. You always find excuses. Because, you look for the good in the person. Eh, kaya naman sa mo, good na good ang anak kong ito, eh, yung pala kamukha nyo. Kaya mahal na mahal mo yung anak mo, kamukhang kamukha mo pala. So, nakikita po natin, pag hinanap natin sa tao yung kamukha ni Jesus, mamamahal natin siya. When do you know that you're beginning to fall out of love? 
And there are people who fall out of love. Mga mag-asawang biglang gumigising one day, hindi na pala sila in love. That's terrible, no? When do you know that you're beginning to fall out of love? When you no longer hide from yourself the mistakes of the person. And when you no longer justify the mistakes. And in fact, kayo na yung nagkocondemn ng mga mistakes na yun. Siguro hindi na nga kayo in love. What it means, romantic love. Kasi yung mga motherly love naman, alam na alam na wrong na eh. Nadya-justify pa rin eh. Hindi na kailangan niyang takpan yun eh. Mahal pa rin. So, kung mamahalin natin na isang tao, hahanapin natin yung good sa kanya, you will always succeed. You want to be happy? Fix your eyes on Jesus. Fix your eyes on Jesus in every person, especially in the Christian, and you will see a lot of it. Then you will be happy. Hindi ang lagi natin hinahanap yung masama, yung mali. Another way to be happy, Christian, is to listen to the good. Napansin nyo ba kung minsan, ang ganda-ganda ng araw nyo, meron lang kayong, may tumawag sa inyo, may nag-text sa inyo, o may nabalitaan kayo, nasira na ang buong araw nyo. Sometimes you don't want to even watch the news dahil baka hindi kayo makatulog. Many people listen to the bad, and so they become miserable. Romans 10.17, Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the work of Christ. That's not exactly the verse that suits what we're saying. But there's truth in that verse that says that faith comes from hearing. Everything comes from hearing. Lack of faith comes from hearing. When you hear somebody who is a doubter, who gives you many kinds of doubts, happiness comes from hearing. May nasabi ang mahal sa buhay, no? I love you, I miss you, happy ka na. Pero meron namang nasabing, ang tapang naman ang niluto mo, lonely ka na. Everything comes from hearing. So ang sinabi dito, listen to the good. Because if you listen to the bad, you will not run out of bad things to hear about you, about others. But why choose to listen to such things all the time? Well, it is good once in a while to listen for self-reflection para makapag-isip-isip tayo, makapag-review-review, pero hindi dapat laging iyon ang nadidinig. Huwag kayong pumayag na ang tenga nyo ay maging basurahan. Kung ayaw nyo yung lote nyo, hinahagisan ang mga kapitbahay ng dumi, ayaw nyo yung sarili nyo, dilalagyan ng dumi ng kapwa, ba't kayo pumapayag na yung tenga nyo ginagawang basurahan ng maraming tao? Tatawagan kayo, you say, I refuse to hear these things. Ayoko. Tenga nyo yun eh, it is your right. I refuse to hear all these negative things, all these negative talk, I don't like. Kasi, yung minsan, masama ang loob ng tao. Huy, ang sama-sama ng loob ko. Kakausapin ka, tapos nakakahalata ka. Pag alis niya, masaya na siya. Nakapagbulalas na kasi, ikaw na yung masama loob. Lumipat na sa'yo. Kasi inilagay niyo sa tenga mo eh. Ganyan din yung may mga sikreto. Alam niyo yung sikreto? Parang dalag na pagkadulas-dulas na paghinawakan mo, nagpupumiglas, gustong makawala. Sabi, huy, may naalaman ako. Pero, pero ano eh, ma- uh, sikreto to. Sa'yo ko lang sasabihin ha. Huwag kayong papayag, ayoko. Ayokong marinig. Kasi ililipat mo sa akin yung hirap ng may daladalang sikreto eh. Mahirap dalhin ang sikreto, di ba? Kaya ako eh, duda sa mga taong gusto lagi, sige na, mag-confide ka sa akin, mag-confide ka. Hmm, chichismis mo ako mamaya, no? Gusto mo lang mag- malaman yan. Kasi ang tao matalino, ayaw niyang marinig yung sikreto ng iba. Kasi pampabigat ng loob yun eh. Kaya naaawa ako sa mga Catholic priests na lalaman lahat ng problema ng mundo sa kompisal. Aba, ipagpe-pray nyo sila, mahirap dalhin yun. Napakahirap. Lalo't may nangumpisa sa'yo, Father, crush kita. Ang hirap naman nata. Medyo sisilipin mo na sa kortina. Aba, medyo mahilab-hilab naman pala ito. Oh. Mahirap yung nalalaman mo ang maraming bagay. Sometimes it's better not to know. Especially if it's very bad. And you won't be able to do anything about it anyway. You will just feel helpless about it. Listen to the good. Avoid listening to the bad. Kung minsan meron kang kapatid, meron kang mga mag-anak, meron kang kaibigan, suriin ninyo ngayon as you're listening, suriin ninyo. May mga tao na pag dumapo sa inyo, nakausap kayo ng 5 or 10 minutes, mamaya galit na kayo sa kagalit nila. Nahalata niyo ba yan? Yung na-influence niya kayo, yung hindi mo pa naririnig na side ng iba, naging bias ka na, ginudge mo na, kasi nila tinambak niya ng bias yung tenga mo. So, dapat nakabantay ka. Kung may security guard sa inyong gate, may security guard sa inyong bahay, lalong maraming security guard sa pintuan ng ating tainga, pinipili lang ang pinapapasok kasi nalalason tayo ng ganyang mga bagay. So what is our rule? Listen to the good. And then of course, you want to be happy? Talk about the good. 
Sabi ng 2 Timothy 2.16, Avoid godless chatter. Iwasan ang mga di makadyos na mga daldalan. Walang uuwi ang mabuti. Ephesians 4.29, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. So, bantayan ang bibig. Kung binabantayan natin yung tenga na huwag tambakan ng poison ng iba, binabantayan naman natin ang ating bibig na huwag magtambak ng poison sa tenga ng iba. At huwag manira ng iba. Our words can be like honey that will soothe, refresh, serve those people around us who get it. But our words can also be like acid that can destroy people. So we should be watchful. Huwag daw payagan, may mga unwholesome talk na lumalabas sa ating mga bibig, bantayan yan. At pag may lumalabas na word sa ating bibig, ano yon? Only what is good to build others up. Na pag nagbuka yung ating bibig, yung topic natin na tao, umimprove ang kanyang image, ang kanyang stature before the listeners, hindi yung bumaba. Because we will be responsible for destroying a person. At hindi nakakatulong sa nakikinig, na pangit ang lumalabas sa ating bibig, kapintasan ng iba, kasi sila man ang tendency, kung may influence tayo sa kanila, maniwala, nagkasala na rin sila, naging bias na rin sila, na subvert na rin yung truth. In other words, we cause them to sin. I say, talk about the good. Pag sinusuri ko po, inoobserbahan ko yung mga tao miserable, malungkot, mga masusungit. Usually, ang mga topic nila, yung mga nakakainis na bagay. Hindi pa ako nakita ng tao ang sungit-sungit. Yung bang pag nilapitan mo, nagagalit, parang tigre, tas galit sa mundo. Pagkatapos, pag nagtotok siya, ang topic niya ay, ang bango-bango ng sampagita. Wala pang ganun. Usually, ang mga topic niya, yung mga kapangitan. Traffic, traffic, traffic. Eh, yung ganun na nga, eh, totoo na nga, lagi mo pang sasabihin. Lalo ka nang naapektuhan. Anong gagawin mo? Kung hindi ikaw ang traffic czar and you're a citizen and you observe traffic rules, that's your contribution. But refuse talking about it all the time and refuse hearing about it all the time. What's so new about it? Ang init-init. Siyempre na sa Pilipinas kaya pumunta ka sa Norway. Ang init, siyempre, mainit dito. Traffic storm. 40 anos ka na, 50 anos. Hindi pa ba alam yun na mainit sa traffic? Malamok. Siyempre na sa traffic kaya magdala kang kulambo, katol, pero... Reklamo ka ng reklamo about things. Nagtataka ako, mga Pilipino, ito yung sabi, ang init, ang init. Mas mareklamo pa sa mga foreigner na nagpupunta rito. Para bang hindi nila alam na mainit talaga rito. But if you always talk about such things, what will happen to you? Mawala ang inyong happiness, ang inyong contentment, magiging maguguluhan ang iyong isip. Napakahirap. Kaya ang sabi sa Psalm 105 verse 2, Sing to Him, sing praise to Him, tell of all His wonderful acts. So kung meron daw ilalabas ang ating bibig, mga pag-awit at papuri sa Panginoon, ikwento ang mga kabutihan ng Panginoon. Hindi yung lagi ikinukwento ninyo eh yung ginagawa ng biyana ninyo na nakakainis. Yung yun na lang nang yun, wala nang bago. Kumisan makahalata kayo, kumisan iniiwasan na tayo ng tao. Ayaw ka ng kausap. Kasi siguro at yung bubo kayong bibig mo, reklamo, mga in- daing, mga kung ano-anong mga problema. Hindi na nakaka-edify sa kapwa. And do you know that is very selfish to always talk about the bad things? Especially if it's what's happening in your life, around you, what you think. Kasi tinatanggalan nyo ng happiness yung tao sa paligid nyo. Inililipit nyo sa kanyang inis, yung galit. It's unkind. So tinitingnan din natin yun. Hindi yung may tao ang saya-saya, dadating ka, biglang natanggal yung happiness niya dahil kinausap mo. Parang may dumating sa kanyang salot. And that salot could be you. So we watch our tongues. Optimistic Christians talk about God's goodness, God's graciousness, and greatness. But people who often talk of negative things discourage themselves, disappoint others, and displease God. Because God says, let good things come out of your mouths. Nakita niyo mga Israel, pag reklamo ng reklamo, puro negative ang sinasabi. Kung ano-ano nang ginawa ng Diyos, binuka ang lupa, pinakain sila sa lupa, lumubog silang buhay, pinadala sila mga ahas at tinuklaw-tuklaw sila. Sari-sari! Ayaw nang just ng mga negative things coming out of our mouths. In the correct forum, yes. Kung merong discussion, merong analysis, yes. Why not? Para improve ng situation. Pero hindi ito yung bubuka yung bibig mo na lang, gano'n na lang ng gano'n. Wala namang na-accomplish. 
lumulungkot ka lang, lumulungkot ang iba, natutuwa si Satan because Satan doesn't want you to be happy. So you have to fight for your happiness. Kung misan, ang happy-happy mo, may darating na tao, para sa expression, para sa, oh, 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 mm, mm, don't talk to me. Masaya ako ngayon, huwag mo sirain ang araw ko. Ha? Tuwing leap year ka lang pupunta sa akin. Kasi may tao ang ganyan, tuwing darating sa'yo, iinisin ka, gagalitin ka. Ngayon, kung talagang very legitimate yung concern niya, makakapag-counsel ka, makakapag-pray, why not? If you will accomplish something positive. But by now, you should know how to examine people around you and what they do to you and what, how they influence you. And also what you do to them and how they influence you. Happiness is the primary duty of life. Hindi naman tayo nilikha ng Diyos para maging malungkot. Sabi niya, lilikha nga ako ng tao at palulungkotin ka sila araw-araw. <laughs> Hindi naman siguro gano'n ng Diyos. Gusto niya tayong mag-enjoy, gusto niya tayong sumaya. So you have to fight for it. Happiness is your birthright as a child of God. So you don't permit people to take that away from you. That's why you don't cling to people. You don't become too dependent on people. You don't love people too much because that will begin your sadness. Kaya sabi ni Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Unahin siya. Pag inunan niyo yung tao, mahal na mahal niyo, eh ang tanong, mahal ba kayo? O mahal kayo ngayon, mahal pa ba kayo bukas? Hindi eh, kawawa ka naman ngayon, kakaway-kaway ka ng puting panyo pag iniiwan-iwanan ka. Mamahalin natin ang tao, pero hindi siya ginagawang idol, hindi siya ginagawang just ng buhay natin. Kasi pag iniasan niyo sa isang tao yung kaligayahan niyo, I'm telling you, you'll be sad. Kasi iiwan ka naman yan, at kung hindi kanya gustong iwan, faithful talaga, eh namatay, di naiwan ka rin, pareho rin ang ending, iiyak-iyak ka rin. Kaya kailangan yung pagmamahal natin sa Diyos, siya yung center, siya yung focus. We love people, but not excessively to the point that they become idols and little gods in our lives. Nakita niyo si uh, Abraham, anong hiningi sa kanya ni Lord na offering? I-offer mga si Isaac. Baka nagiging diyos josa na ng buhay niya. Eh. Baka sobrang inantay, inasam nung dumating. Baka nagiging idol. The Lord wanted it proven na hindi yan ang ngayari. Abraham passed the test. So, Isaac was not taken anyway. Buhay natin umiikot sa Diyos. Pag pinaikot niya sa tao, yung sinabi niya at di niya sinabi can make you happy or sad. Kawawa naman kayo noon. Wala kayong center. You're, you're like a vine. Hindi kayo makatayo mag-isa. Nakapulupot lang kayo para makarating sa taas. Pag nawala yung pinupulupotan, tanggal ka na rin. Dapat meron ka sariling trunk and branches not a vine that clings only. So, think about such things. And then, you want to be happy, work for the good. Siguro kaya sinabi ni Lord, isa sa mga commandments, six days you shall labor. Because people who work are people who have the more capacity to be happy. The human body was designed in such a way that it should move and work to the point that if it doesn't, you atrophy. Ano nangyayari sa'yo? Humihila yung mga buto, mga laman, hanggang mamaya, hindi ka na nagpa-function. Kaya yung mga tao nagkakaroon ng mga sakuna, mga kung ano-ano, ang ginagawa, tineterapy, pinapakilos, pinapagalaw. Kasi hindi ka sasaya nang hindi ka gumagalaw. Ang tao dapat kasi nagtatrabaho, kumikilos. Kaya tingnan yung mga nalalagay sa mga preso, sa kawalan ng magawa, hanggang sa loob ng bote ng tentay patis, gumagawa ng barko. Kasi kailangan meron kang magawa. So you should work for the good. Maraming taong miserable kasi idle, walang ginagawa. Konting-konti ang ginagawa. And you know that an idle mind is the devil's workshop. So we should not be idle, we should work for the good. So first cycle, you work because your parents expect you. Pinag-aaral ka, binibigyan ka ng trabaho, magugus ka ng plato, do your bed, this and that. You work para hindi ka mapagalitan. Then, ka-graduate ka. You work para ka magkaroon ng pera, para ka magkaroon ng ganito, ng ganyan, makatulong sa mga mahal sa buhay. Then, kailangan nagta-third cycle lang tao in this life. Kung pinahaba ni Lord yung buhay natin, you work for the good. You work for pleasure. You work because it's good for you and it's good for others. Not anymore because you only have to simply survive. I believe that the design of God is that men should work hard be prosperous enough so that in the latter parts of their lives, they will have the luxury to choose what work they like to do, what makes them very happy, and what makes them very useful to fellow men, to church, to country. But it's important to work for the good. It's pathetic. Hanggang namamatay na lang tayo, we're working to survive. Kailangan makagraduate tayo doon. You should be productive. You should create wealth. 
So that in the latter parts of our lives, it's our option to do this or do that. What to do and what not to do. Hindi yung muhing-muhi ka sa ginagawa mo hanggang tumanda ka na lang. Yung muhing-muhi ka, wala ka magawa. Kasi pag hindi mo ginawa yun, hindi ka kakain bukas. Parang nakakasira ng dignity yun ng tao. Kaya mahalaga, ang sabi ng kanta, a man must break his back to earn his days of pleasure. Para dumarating yung point that you can do what is good. Kaya nakikita niyo yung mga taong hindi na kailangan mag-survive. Kung isang may mga nakaipon na, may mga uh, wealth na sila. Anong ginagawa? Charities. Mga tumasali sila sa Save the Whale Movement. Yung Bird Watcher Society. Yung mga ganun. Kasi yun ang yung gusto nilang gawin. Nagagawa na nila. And it's not wrong to do that. As long as you do not neglect to help the needy and to be useful. Kailangan gawin nating goal yun. To work for the good. At pag sinabi natin good, hindi lang yung good for humanity, hindi yung for world peace and for the children na parang laging sagot sa Miss Universe contest. Kundi yung good because it feels good. Because God does not find it bad. In fact, it's good. It's good for you and good for many people. Then you will be happy. Galatians 6.10 Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. You want to be happy? Kahit hindi ka pa wealthy or rich or what? Do good to others, especially to the brothers and sisters in the Lord. There is something mysterious, nearly magical about good deeds. They make you happy. Pero pag gumagawa ka ng masama sa kapwa, kahit na nakawan mo siya, nagawa mo yung gusto mo, there is a little voice inside of you telling you, you should really be sad, you should really be sad. But when you do something good to people, it's automatic. You become happy. You know why? Because we were created by God for good works. Yun ang design ng tao, for good works. That when you do bad works, even if you have already a very warped sense of values, that you may have superficial happiness about it, deep within you, there is that acidic pain because you did something wrong. So yung gumagawa ng tama, sumasaya. Kahit pa siya hindi bigyan ng premyo, hindi bigyan ng plaque, hindi bigyan ng kung ano-ano mga honor, deep within you, masaya ka. Hebrews 13.21 May the Lord equip you with every good thing for doing His will and may He work in us what is pleasing to Him. So pakinabiyan nyo nga sa inyong katabi o sa inyong sarili kung wala kayong katabi. Five ways to be happy. Puro meron niyang good, di ba? Think about the good. You look for the good. Listen to the good. Talk about the good and work for the good. In other words, brothers and sisters, our life really is what we make it. Napakalaki ng participation natin kung tayo magiging masaya or not. Huwag niyong sisihin ng planeta. Huwag niyong sabihin kasi nung no, ipinanganak ako, magkakalinya yung uh, Pluto at saka yung Venus. Huwag niyong sisihin ang mga constellations and Milky Way. Huwag niyong sisihin ang inyong genes. Alam niyo naman ngayon, sinisi na lahat, lalo mahili kayo sa Western Psychology, kay Freud, sisisihin ang lahat, pwera lang ang sarili. Sisihin mo ang chemistry ng iyong body, ang iyong sugar count. Eh kasi itong sugar count ko, mga babae, eh kasi period ko ngayon. Basta sinisisi na lahat. But we have a responsibility and we have that God-given will that can marshal all resources so that we are in control of who we are and what we want to be. You cannot control the planet, but you can control yourself. It is the greatest victory. Our life is what we make it, or at the very least, our life is what we allow the world to make it. Kung hindi ka naman pumapayag, I refuse to be sad. I like to be happy. But you know, sadness, like the wind, like birds, sometimes they fly over your heads. But you can stop them from nesting in your hair. It is important. Pamisa-misan, hindi mo nakokontrol, dumarating. Pero huwag naman nalulungkot ka na nga, magpapatugtog ka pa ng mga punebre. Magsasara ka pa ng kwarto, didiliman mo pa. Eh talagang anong hinahanap mo? Talagang kalungkutan. It's what you allow to happen. So anong masasabi ko sa mga kapatid? Ayaw ng Diyos na malungkot tayo. Hindi niya tayo kinirate para sa distahin. But Satan wants you sad. Remember that. Satan wants you sad. Don't permit him. 
Don't allow him to deceive you into thinking that happiness is dependent on things, dependent on people, dependent on this, dependent on that. No. Happiness is in your heart. It's always there. You have to look deep enough and you will see that it's there because God planted it there. And God wants it watered, fertilized, taken care of so it will bear fruit in your life. What can I tell you, Christian? Be happy, not sad. Lord, we thank you that you are a God of happiness. We thank you, Father, that you love us, that you want us to be happy. But right now, Father, we pray for our people who may be among us who are not as happy as you want them to be. Pinapanalangin namin, Panginoon, ang mga kasama namin ngayon. Kilala mo po ang aming puso. Kung may mga kalungkutan, turuan niyo po kami malaman kung bakit. Kung ano ang pinag-uugatan ng mga kalungkutan na ito. At nang mabunot namin, Lord, by the power of the Holy Spirit, so that the good and perfect and beautiful plan that you have for us will happen, that we may be happy. Brothers and sisters, in silence, let the Holy Spirit talk to you. Lalong-lalo yung may mga inner sadnesses. Yung mga kalungkutan na nasa mga puso, surrender it to the Lord. Like broken toys, give it to the Master's hand so that the Master can repair it and give it to you in its good condition. Our brokennesses, our broken heart, our sadness, bring them to the Lord. Sabi niya, come to me, all of you and who are tired and heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Let us rest from sadness. It is such a heavy burden to bear in this all too short life. So in silence, be with the Lord. Allow the Lord to touch you. Ipahipo ninyo ang inyong mga puso sa Kanya. Panginoon, lumalapit po kami ngayon. Hipuin niyo po ang puso ng bawat isang may mga kalungkutan. Lalong-lalo, Lord, na yung mga kalungkutan ay medyo abnormal na, na lagi na lang, hindi na mawala pa ulit-ulit. Lord, touch our hearts. Create a miracle in us, O God. Kayo lamang po ang makakagamot sa amin. You are our physician. You are our healer. And we pray, Father, I ask you now in the name of Jesus Christ to touch people who are sad so that your joy, your happiness may be ours. Give us the wisdom to understand the dynamics of this sadness. Give us the wisdom to know where it comes from so we may uproot it and refuse to have it in our lives. Lord, give your people discernment so they will know the deceptions that cause needless loneliness and sadness. And we pray for those who are not that sad. We thank you, Father, for people who are happy, people who are generally happy. We pray that you may give us the ministry of touching the lives of sad people so that the happiness you gave us may overflow into their lives. Teach us, Father, that when we are happy, we will not be insensitive to those who are sad. When we are healthy, we will not be insensitive to those who are sick. That when we have plenty, we will not be insensitive to those who are wanting. Father, let your blessings not only be enjoyed by us, but may they overflow so that it may reach people as well. Teach us to give as we receive from you. And right now, Father, very, very specially, I'm praying for your people who may be sad. Ibat ibang uri ng kalungkutan, ibat ibang uri ng mga dahilan, pero iisang Diyos, kayo lang. Hipuin niyo po ang buhay ng bawat isang nangangailangan ng paghipong ito. Parang isang sakit na talamak ang kalungkutan, paggalingan niyo po, Panginoon. At ituro niyo sa bawat isa kung anong dapat iwasan ng hindi maging Diyos Diyosa ng buhay namin ng kalungkutan at kung ano mga dapat gawin para maging malaya mula sa kasakitan ito. Christians, brothers and sisters, be alone with the Lord. Let the Holy Spirit comfort you and the Holy Spirit deal with you. Be alone with God, our God who wants you 